Akak Makak stood at the veranda's rail, hands clasped behind his back and a fat cigar clamped in his teeth. He didn't turn as Victoria walked up behind him. You're back, he said. I am. From where he stood, he could see the sea fort and the blue waters of the channel. Any luck? Some, she said. She took her prisoner by the shoulder and pushed him down into a kneeling position on the planks at his feet. Akak Makak looked down with his one good eye. Who's that? Cassius Berg, Victoria said. The monkey gave the man an experimental prod with his shoe. Didn't you kill that fucker once already? Victoria shook her head. Not on this timeline. Akak frowned at her. Her face was pale despite her exertions, and her eyes were red and tired looking. He could see she hadn't slept well in several days. And your other self, he said. Did you find her? Victoria shook her head again. We were too late. A wrought iron patio table stood a little way along the veranda. Behind it stood a wheeled drinks cabinet filled with bottles of all shapes and sizes. Victoria left Berg kneeling where he was and walked over and helped herself to a vodka martini. A parrot squawked in one of the higher branches, its plumage red against the canopy's khaki and emerald. Six weeks ago, Akak had tried to talk her out of getting involved with another version of herself, but, predictably, she hadn't listened, and he'd had more than enough to do trying to keep control of his monkey army. The problem with being the alpha monkey was that they all looked at him to tell them what to do and arbitrate all their pathetic squabbles. When faced with any kind of decision, they were more than happy to pass the responsibility up the chain of command until it dropped into his lap. It was the way primate troops worked. It was also the way the military worked, and he didn't like it. It was a pain in the hole. He was used to being a maverick, a grunt, an ace pilot rather than an air marshal. Being a leader cramped his style. Considering the figure at his feet, he said, What are we going to do with him? Victoria took a sip from the glass and wiped her lips on the back of her gloved hand. He's a cyborg, she said, same as before, a human brain in an artificial body. Akak Makak twitched his nostrils. The man smelled like an old, wet raincoat. He gave the guy a nudge and, arms still cuffed behind him, Berg tipped over onto his side. It's definitely him, though. He watched as Victoria swirled the clear liquid in the bottom of her glass. May we, she said. And you realise what this means, don't you? Akak Makak scowled at her. Should I? It means the Gaian's on this parallel, too. Akak Makak's hackles rose, his scowl turned into a snarl, and his fingers went to his hips, where two silver colts shone in their holsters. Where is he? Paris, I think. An operation calling itself the Malsite Institute. I had Kate pull up some information on it. And? Officially, it doesn't exist, Victoria said. There's nothing about it until two years ago. Rumours, conspiracy theories, that sort of thing. Very secretive, government money, black research, heavy security. <laughs> Sounds familiar. If he's there, Victoria continued, and he's building another robot army, we have to stop him. Akak Makak growled deep in his throat. Dr Nagayan had been the man responsible for creating them both in his laboratories, their own personal Frankenstein. He took the cigar from his lips and rolled it in his fingers. We leave in an hour, he decided. He was overdue for some action and, after spending the last six weeks trying to sort out the complaints and squabbles of a troop of irritable, irresponsible monkeys, he was itching to bust some skulls. Reactivate your husband, he said, and recall the crew. What are you going to do, Victoria asked. What do you think I'm going to do? His lips curled back, revealing his sharp yellow fangs. He clamped the cigar between his teeth, leathery fingers bunched into fists. If the guy's here, I'm going to grab the bastard by the ears and rip his fucking head off. <laughs> <laughs>